So it has been one week since Hilda arrived with us, and it's been a pretty nice week overall. I'm just doing these puppy updates because I was thinking, I cannot remember this stage with Cedric at all. This was before we had phones in our pockets with cameras on them, so we have no memory or like evidence that Cedric was even ever a puppy, and I guess it was 14 years ago or 15 years ago, but we just want to record as much of this as we can, because from what I remember, he went from being like this to like a lanky golden retriever looking thing within like two to three months. So nice to have as much of this on record as we can. Uh, this is me trying to get her to sit. We're just doing some rough sort of um, you know, early tricks and early commands and things like that. And she's adapting really well to them. And overall, she's settling in to the house with the people uh, really, really well. Um, the main issue we're having is the cats. Uh, not super stoked for her to be here. There's no, nothing bad's happened or anything, but you know, we'd like the cats to eventually get used to her a bit. They are just kind of outraged still. Lemon, the exotic short hair, the one on the screen now, she is more malleable. She is somewhat interested in her and not completely avoiding her like the plague. Um, you know, she'll give her a bit of time. They've got some shared interests, like they both sort of like little things on the ends of things that they can chase around and, and whatnot. So Lemon is probably slightly higher hopes for her being a friend than for Basil. Basil is the, the British short hair. And you see here, Lemon's like, gives her a bit of space, gives her a bit of, you know, time. As Basil just wants nothing to do with it at all. He just takes the widest way around, not interested in the slightest. And she's, I mean, the dog does herself no favors. Like she'll get too excited and she'll barrel off after him and he'll have to run away. And it's just like another week's worth of good work reversed. So uh, this it also sort of about we're keeping the cat's claws like pretty well groomed and you know, on the shorter side. So there's going to be a few books. We're sure of it. Um, and that'll, you know, that'll set Hilda right as well. They, Ada was always the same, you know. Uh, this is her having some issues with the watering can. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they do. And this is, yeah, more sit training. So the th main things we're trying to do is sit, which is where everything else comes from. So you get him to sit, and then you can get him to, to, st to stay, and then you can get him to come or to move um, oh, yeah. or, and heal oh, and all that sort of thing. And we're also trying to do some space control. So uh, we don't want her to come onto carpeted floors and bring all of her, you can already see, she brings like straw and dirt with her everywhere she goes, which is fine. But if we can make it so she respects carpet floor zones, and comes in with permission, but not just barges in. That's what we're after. And you just do that by a simple space control. Like with dogs, it's all about controlling space and you know your presence in an area. So we're just trying to get that started from the basics, from from the formative years. Um, she does manage to chase and catch that tail fairly often. So yeah, we're just doing. Oh, I'm doing here is like some co-pats with her and Lemon, just trying to get them used to each other. So there's no real, you know, you just want to try and avoid like sudden things happening, like sudden blow ups. So you can see Lemon's happy to get pretty close to her when there's the, you know, the toy involved, which is just a stick. Tell you what, you get these animals, like all this custom stuff and their favorite things are always like, the same with the cats, you get a cat a nice bed and it'll sleep literally on a tea towel or in the laundry basket or on like a flattened down tissue box and it'll just ignore the bed and the scratching post you got for it. And dogs are kind of the same, I've noticed. Hilda, 
Yeah, she'll sit with the toys we've got her at night time, but during the day she rates sticks and leaves and all sorts of stuff like that way more. Uh, one thing we have had issues with her with, she is not interested in the chickens at all. Well, she's by that I mean she's absolutely terrified of the chickens. She's got, um, you know, no interest in getting anywhere near them, and I suppose it's just lemon just taking the scenic route. Um, and I suppose it's like they're about as big as her and there's 12 of them, so I kind of get it. But you see here, I'm just trying to get her to not, when she's older and bigger and stronger, uh, kill them. <laughs> so Ada used to just kill a chicken if she got near enough to it. A retrieval will have a lower prey drive, so it shouldn't be as big of an issue, but I still don't even really want her retrieving them for me because that could just be bad. And also chickens are inherently kind of dirty as well, and it's, you know, yeah, nothing, nothing really to be gained from her doing that. Uh, this is her with her um, with her favorite thing to chew at the moment, which is a steel railway sleeper tie. So I do not know what it is about this specific one, but uh, yeah, that's that's where she goes when she goes outside and clangs her little teeth against that. And also the classic, the corner of the rug, the slightly upturned corner of the rug that's you know, always been like that. And we've just resigned ourselves to we're going to get this rug like destroyed once the dog's a little bit older and once she's ruined it sufficiently and then we'll just be rugless for a while so there we are that's her other favorite toy at the moment look yeah overall uh, it's been a really nice settling in week i'm up still most nights with her uh just once so i'll get up at about midnight or if i'm coming home from work late i'll just when i get home from work i'll take her outside for a wee and a, maybe even a poo and um, back in and she goes straight back to bed. This dog puts herself to bed at about seven o'clock at night. She grabs her blanket and she walks herself to bed and gets in. It's quite amazing. Um, she just knows when it's time to sleep. And you know, during the day, she probably is awake about half the time and fast asleep uh, the other half the time. So yeah, going about as expected. One thing that's caught us by surprise that we just only remembered as soon as it happened was that they stink. The inside of a puppy, stinks their breath and their farts are just something else while their gut bacteria is getting sorted my goodness absolutely rank uh, i tried to do this video with her sitting on my lap and the i'm pretty good with smells i smell some pretty rank stuff like just in my life i've smelled some things and yeah it, these are smells that take me back a little bit as well so yeah, it's, uh, yeah. <laughs> it was something that came roaring back to me straight away and i was like oh that's right Anyway, guys, that's the video for today. I've got some knives, so we'll be doing some knife content again very soon. This first couple of weeks or so has sort of taken out of me. I do feel a bit like I've got a newborn baby at home. Um, sleeping a bit lighter, you know, all that stuff while you've got something changing happening in your house. So uh, I'll be back to the normal pace very soon, I'm sure. Goodbye, goodbye, goodbye.